in and out of situations that tug of war at me, all day long I struggle for the answers that I need. How many of you today are searching for answers in your life? You have questions, you have decisions that you need to make, like you're struggling to know what tomorrow may hold and you know that the decisions that you make today affect the outcome of tomorrow. And so you're struggling with the answers. Like right now, some of you are wondering questions like, what am I going to do with my future? How am I going to handle this next season of life? Why is Pastor Anthony wearing a Hawaiian shirt? It's Labor Day weekend. Come on, people. I'm on vacation here. Well, I'm not really on vacation, but I'm trying to mentally like get there. And I thought for some of you on vacation, you might think I'm there with you. So why not a Hawaiian shirt? We all have questions that we need to answer. And King Solomon was no different. He struggled with those same answers that we all need. And in 1 Kings chapter 3, and you can turn there in your Bible today as we kind of hang out in 1 Kings chapter 3, King Solomon has this incredible encounter with the presence of God. Okay, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5, this is what it says. That night the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream, and God said, what do you want? Ask, and I'll give it to you. Now that's powerful, right? To hear from the Lord. What do you want? Ask it, say it, speak it. And I'll do that for you. And Solomon replied this, You showed faithful love to your servant, my father, David. Solomon was King David's son. He took over the throne after King David because he was honest and true and faithful to you. And you have continued your faithful love to him today by giving him a son to sit on his throne. Now, O Lord, my God, you have made me king instead of my father David. But listen to this. He says, but I'm like a little child who doesn't know his way around. And here I am in the midst of your own chosen people, a nation so great and numerous they can't even be counted. Give me understanding, an understanding heart, so that I can govern your people well and know the difference between right and and wrong for who by himself is able to govern this great people of yours. And so here is King Solomon, a leader who's tasked with an incredible opportunity, but yet many challenges. And so what is he saying? I need answers here. I'm in like a whole new area of my life. I got to lead your people, God. I need, I need some discernment and wisdom on how to do that. And so he comes before the Lord and asks for those things. Many of you are in that exact same situation in your life. You're leading in areas where maybe you feel ill-equipped, especially in this season. You weren't prepared for this season, but yet now you're having to lead through it. Verse 10 says, The Lord was pleased that Solomon had asked for wisdom. So God replied, Because you ask for wisdom in governing my people with justice and have not asked for long life or wealth or the death of your enemies, I will give you what you ask for. I will give you a wise and understanding heart such as no one else has ever had or ever will have. And I will also give you what you didn't ask for, riches and fame. No other king in all the world will be compared to you for the rest of your life. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? Now, most of us, if God said to us, what do you want? Ask it. I'll give it to you. Well, I'd like a house at that place and I'd like a boat there. And I'd, like we, we have all these things that we would want. And God says, wow, I'm so proud of the way that you responded to, to my question. Not only am I going to give you the wisdom, not only am I going to give you the discernment, I'm going to give you all the things you didn't even ask for. What a beautiful, what a beautiful thing. But here's what I want you to see. I want you to back up even before this encounter, because this is where most people um, this is where they go when we think about King Solomon. Willie really knows the wisest guy ever lived. It's funny when we normally say he's a wise guy. No, he was really a wise guy. He was a man of great wisdom and understanding. And, 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 and we, we go to this spot in King Solomon's life. But I want you to back up even before he had that experience in the presence of God. And I want you to look at verse 4. It says the most important of these places of worship was at Gibeon. So the king, King Solomon, King Solomon went there and sacrificed 
a thousand burnt offerings. All right, so what am I saying? I'm saying King Solomon spent a lot of time in the temple. He spent a lot of time offering sacrifices to the Lord. We know that King David was a worshiper. Like we look to him as like the example of what it means to worship the Lord. Well, King Solomon followed in the footsteps of his dad and he was a worshiper as well. He loved to be in the presence of the Lord. He was no stranger to the presence of the Lord. And I'm convinced that he knew what he needed to ask for because of the time that he spent in the presence of God. When God said, hey, ask whatever you want, God could trust him with that experience and that prayer because he knew that King Solomon could be trusted with it. Why? Because he had spent so much time being in the presence of the Lord. Could it be that you aren't getting clarity to the questions of your life because you aren't spending enough time in the presence of God? We spend so much time seeking answers to our prayers. We seek healing and we seek God's hand to move in our life. We want God to do something. And those are honorable requests. We talked about last week, pray without ceasing, like ask and, and ask again. Let's be persistent. I'm not speaking out of both sides of my mouth. I am saying, however, that what's possible is that we need more than anything else in our life. Maybe just to be in the presence of the Lord. Like maybe the reason that God wants you to be persistent is so that you will stay close to him. You know, the Lord's prayer is our example that Jesus taught us how to pray. The disciples came to Jesus and said, Lord, teach us how to pray. So Jesus gives us the Lord's prayer as this model. And, and we're going through that on Wednesday night. Marianne and I are doing this online Bible study and we're just walking through the Lord's prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But here it is. Give us this day our daily bread. I think that's really important because I think the Lord wants us to rely on Him daily for our provision. It doesn't say like, give us this day our, our monthly bread or give us this year our yearly bread. No, like the, the Lord wants us to be close and near to Him. And I think sometimes that persistence that we have in our prayer life, I think God wants us to show that persistence because we're, we're showing daily that we are completely dependent upon Him. And so maybe we just want God to fix it and we want God to let this thing be over and we want God to just do this thing today so we just can move on. When what God wants more than anything in your life, He wants to answer your prayer. I believe God loves to, to do the things for His people. He gives good gifts to His children. I believe that He is a healer and that He loves the heal. He's not just a great physician. He's the greatest physician. But more than any of those things in your life, what God wants is an intimate relationship with you as His child. He wants to be intimately involved in your life. And so, yes, he may want to heal you. He may want to do these things in your life that you're so desperately seeking him to do. But what he wants more than anything is for you to be in his presence. And Solomon just camped out there in the presence of God. And then when he was faced with this big request of the Lord, ask anything that you want and I'll give it to you. His answer was right because his answer wasn't just a good answer. It was a God answer. It was the right answer. It was a godly answer. You know, that song that we sang says, then I come into your presence and all my questions become clear. And for a sacred moment, no doubt can interfere. There's so many times in my life where I haven't, haven't had the answer that I needed. I had questions, but I didn't have answers. There are moments where I was faced with a decision and I wasn't exactly sure which way to go. But like that song says, then I come into your presence and all of a sudden my questions become clear. 
And for that sacred moment, no doubt can interfere. Now, maybe there's something that is staring at you in the face and you just aren't sure if this is something God is leading you to do or if it's just you. I mean, that's a big question. And I'll be honest, as a pastor, it's probably the one that I get more than anything. How do you know what God's saying? How do you know what it is that God wants for you? How do you know this is the answer to the questions that you're facing? Because sometimes things can look good to us, but it might not be the God thing. How do I know the difference between a good thing and a God thing? I often say, how do I know the difference in my will and thy will? All right. Maybe there's a good offer on the table, but it might not be the God offer. You know, maybe you have found someone that seems like they would be a good spouse. But is this the person that God has for you? What may be a, a good door of opportunity might not be the God door of opportunity. So how do I know the difference? Now, let me help you just a bit. Maybe you feel like God is leading you to do something, but I want to ask you a few questions that will give you clarity to determine if this is a good thing or a God thing. Here's the first thing. Have I given this enough time? Have I given this enough time? My mom has always kept um, this writing in, in her Bible. And, and what it says is, it's better to wait upon the Lord than to rush ahead with my own plan and live life with a thousand regrets. It's better to wait upon the Lord than to rush ahead with my own plan and live life with a thousand regrets. Have I given this enough time? I, I know personally if I have an idea or a creative thought, um, I automatically just want to assume this is from the Lord. We got to do this. This is a God thing. Uh, but I try to give it some time because I know that by tomorrow I'll have another big idea. And what I've determined is if I give it enough time, if it's just me, I'll come up with something different and just kind of move on. But the reality is those things that God planned in my heart, they don't go anywhere. And those things actually continue to grow until I act on those things in obedience. And so time is a very important thing. Second thing, are my motives pure? Is this something that's going to benefit me and my kingdom? Or is this something that's really going to benefit God and, and His kingdom? Is this something God has put in my hands, an opportunity He's put in my hands so that I will be a better follower of Jesus and can be more influential in, in pastoring my city? Even in a relationship, you may think, well, how does that apply to a relationship? If, I, if, I, if I'm thinking about this person that I might want to spend the rest of my life with, how do I know? And I often tell couples, hey, here's how you know if that person is the one that you might want to spend the rest of your life with. Can you serve God better together than you can on your own? If you can serve God better together and you can make a bigger impact on the kingdom of God together as a couple, that's the right direction, right? So are my motives pure? Here's the third one. This is a big one. Does my plan, does this align with the word of God? Does it align with the word of God? Is this something that God is birthing in my heart? That's a great question. Or is this just something that I've come up with and I'm asking God to bless? I like to refer to this as home alone theology. Do you remember little Kevin McAllister, right? There's a need, right? Somebody's trying to break into the house. What does he do? He comes up with this elaborate plan to protect his home. And then right before he executes the plan, what does he do? He sits down and he prays this prayer. God, would you, would you bless this highly nutritious, microwavable macaroni and cheese meal and the lady who sold it to me on sale? Amen. What was he doing? Came up with this elaborate plan and at the very last minute, God, would you bless my plan? We do this all the time. We come up with this plan. We come up with this dream. And then right before we start to execute it, okay, God, I, I got this really great idea. I got this really great plan. What I want you to do is I want you to bless it. And when that happens... Oftentimes we end up on our face. Here's what I would encourage you. Why don't we start on our face? Start on our face in prayer and we pray this prayer. God, what is it that you want to bless? What is it that you want to bless in my life? Let me invest my life in doing that. I don't want you to just bless some idea that I have, but instead I want you to birth a God-sized dream in my heart. Give me the plan to execute and let it be something that you want to bless. I don't want to spend my life doing something over here that you don't even want to bless. I want to invest my time in life doing something that matters in eternity and that matters to you. Something that you want to bless. Here's another question. Have I sought wise counsel? 
I think that's a great question to ask. I can tell you, I have a lot of people in my life that I trust. And I can't tell you how many times I pick up the phone call or pick up the phone and make that call and just say, hey, this is what I feel like God's speaking into my life. These are some pros. These are some cons. I'd like to know, how do you feel about that? Do you see that as something that God wants to do in my life? Can you give me some counsel on this? I do this all the time, even today. And so I really encourage you, seek wise counsel. And then finally, what should my next step be? Let's put some action behind the things that God has put in our heart. You know, I've got a thing that, that I often go back to that says, um, a vision without action is a daydream. It's just a daydream. We've got to put some action. We've got, to, we've got to step out of our comfort zone. We've got to step out of our places of fear. And we've got to begin to respond in obedience to the things that God is speaking to us while we're in His presence. And for that sacred moment, no doubt can interfere. I can tell you this has been a season where I've seen some doubt interfering with people's minds, their hearts, their relationships, and their lives. And the best way to combat that doubt is just to spend more time alone in His presence. There is nothing more healing. There is nothing that brings more peace. There is nothing that brings more refreshment and joy. There is nothing that brings more courage and more confidence than just spending time with your Savior. The Bible says that He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I love that old hymn that says, And He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me that I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there is like nothing we've ever known. Powerful words. And today, I encourage you, camp out in the presence of God. Father, we thank you today for your presence. God, we thank you for peace that passes our ability to even understand it. We can't even fathom what it is that you want to do. And I pray that we would just sit at your feet and that we would be intentional about doing so. And Lord, I pray that as our questions become clear, as you begin to give us answers and directions for these decisions that we face in our life, God, let us just remember that you love us, you're with us, and you are a God who can be trusted. And I thank you that you invite us as your sons and daughters to sit in your presence. And I pray that if there's someone that's watching today that they've not yet said yes to you, that they would just simply pray, Lord Jesus, I invite you into my heart. I ask you to wash me, forgive me. I ask you to set me free from the power of sin. I ask you to set me free from the penalty of sin. I ask you to set me free from the presence of sin and that you would give me strength to live my life for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today and inviting us into your home. It's always an honor to spend time with you. And here's what's so cool, guys. Next Sunday, September the 13th, we're having our first back to in-person gathering at River Bend Middle School. It's going to be an outdoor event. And we can't wait to spend time with you next Sunday, September 13th, 10 a.m. an outdoor service. For more information about the logistics of that service, our expectations for you and the things that we're doing to meet your expectations, to make sure that everything is safe and ready for you to come and worship with your church family, why don't you go over to northparkrdu.com. We got some great information there that will give you all of the details about next week's in-person gathering. And if you've been joining us online during this experience and we've not yet met you, because I know there are many of you, you joined our church family during this pandemic and we've not had a chance to meet you. We can't wait to see you in person. 
Now, we're going to continue to be online for those who don't feel quite ready to jump back in person, and that's okay. If you're not ready to do that and you don't feel like it's safe to do so, no issue at all. We want you to come when you are ready, but when you are ready, we will be prepared for you in a safe, family-friendly worship environment. We love you guys. Make sure if this is your first experience, you head over to northparkrdu.com, hit that digital connect card. Give us a chance to connect with you. And I want to remind you that you are loved. We are cheering you on and we are with you every step of the way. Hot out here, man. Ooh, this is going to be muggy. My hair is getting flatter even as I speak. Can you still hear me? <laughs> this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's some bloopers for you. Slow walk. Fast walk. <laughs> we'll just see what happens. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. We ready? I'm ready for ice cream, dude. When I get done, get some ice cream. What kind of ice cream you want? I'm gonna get um, some butter pecan, not butter pecan, butter pecan. What kind of tree is that? It's a pecan tree, but we put in ice cream, butter pecan. And then we're getting ice cream, Jonathan. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get butter pecan in this hand. And I'm gonna get some strawberry in this hand. Very good.